Great. So after a very insightful session by Uchit Vyas from KPMG, next up we have an amazing speaker to conclude this section of technical frack before we take a break uh, for the uh, next part of the API Days Live Singapore. So we have Christoph Santhon, Solutions Engineer at Smart Bear, and he will be sharing a very insightful session on the topic, the importance of quality in your API architecture. And specifically in this section of technical track, having um, uh, gone through the reimagining of the investment workflow using APIs, hacking JWTs and how to stop it, and then also touching upon the team collaboration with Uchit, I think now Christoph will be sharing some crucial aspects about the quality in the API architecture. So Christoph, a very warm welcome to API Days Live Singapore. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hi, Daraj. Um, thank you. Um, it's good to be here. Um, nice to meet you, or um, e meet you. So the stage is yours. Um, we will take any of the questions at the end of your sessions. We'll reserve a couple of minutes for the Q&A. So you can take this stage now. OK, great. Thank you. So um, I guess, hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, um, and good evening to everyone, um, wherever you're joining from. I hope you're all keeping well. Um, I'd firstly like to introduce myself. Um, so I'm Christoph Santhorn, a solutions engineer at SmartBear. And I work with customers to improve um, their testing workflows. Um, previously, I've worked as a professional services consultant at CA Technologies and as a pre-sales engineer um, at Microfocus, working on identity and access management and various um, security solutions. And yeah, thank you uh, for joining me today where I'll be talking about the importance of quality um, in your API architecture. So before I begin, um, I'd just like to give a short introduction to SmartBear for those who may not have heard of us before. Um, so we were founded in 2009 in Boston and we have grown to 12 uh, global offices. We have over 15 million uh, users of our tools, um, so a strong community, um, and they use our tools um, that are designed to ensure quality across um, the entire software development lifecycle. And over 24,000 customers now, um, ranging from small to more medium businesses through to enterprise names like Google, Microsoft, and Adidas. Uh, globally, we have over 650 employees. And um, as you may know, SmartBear uh, currently supports three open source initiatives, um, which are Swagger and the open uh, API specification for API design and collaboration. Um, SOAP UI for API and web service testing, um, probably a familiar one with everyone, and Cucumber for behavior-driven uh, uh, development. So uh, the agenda for my talk today really is um, talking about um, the fact that APIs are now um, the foundation for our digitally connected world, and that's um, there are challenges to API development, um, and those challenges really, um, I guess, uh, make a change to the quality of your API architecture. Um, so um, it's really um, important to look at what we can do in terms of strategies on improving that quality um, in your API architecture. So I'll be discussing that today. So. Um, I want to start by acknowledging that APIs are the foundation of our digitally connected world. Um, I would imagine most of you would somewhat agree uh, with that statement, given that you're here today at API Days. Um, so as we know, APIs allow applications and devices to talk to one another and work together. Um, this enables us to uh, develop new processes and innovations, um, which can help improve our lives and keep us connected. Um, and we've seen in the past year the acceleration of digital transformations. Um, and Bloomberg has actually said that every company now is an e-commerce company. Uh, so from the slide, you can actually see some examples um, of how interconnected our world is. Um, from our Zoom meetings uh, while we're working from home to our smartphones, online banking services, uh, digital supply chains, um, to even Google Maps in our cars. 
uh, all of these technologies that we use in our day-to-day -day lives are all made possible with APIs. So APIs are essential to ensure the connections of our applications. What this means is API quality is essential um, to ensure that our applications work. This brings us to API development challenges. Um, so why do these challenges matter? Well, it's because they can impact the quality of your API. So while we've been working with customers at SmartBear, um, we've heard a few common challenges come up. Um, so some of these are that the developed APIs fail to meet the original business goals, even though there was an agreement on the design. Now, this might be due to a lack of collaboration along the process. Um, another is that as a designer, it's difficult to get feedback during the API development lifecycle, or that uh, there isn't a source of truth on the API definition. Um, so this might be because there are multiple API definitions and multiple versions circulating throughout the organization um, on you know, personal laptops, um, across emails uh, and whatnot. And we're also hearing um, that quality issues are hurting adoption. And really this makes sense because um, if your API is not giving an acceptable response time or even giving the correct uh, responses, then it's less likely to be chosen and relied upon. And lastly, creating API documentation uh, from scratch is time consuming and error prone, um, which is likely connected to the fact that with more APIs being created, um, the more they are becoming inconsistent and difficult to understand and support. Um, so this is pretty relevant in our time right now after the pandemic with most organizations uh, being forced into uh, digital transformation initiatives. So without proper documentation, it's really difficult to adopt your APIs, both internally um, and externally. So consumers won't actually know how to integrate your APIs into their applications. Um, and this certainly uh, won't be helped when there is much more choice in today's API ecosystem and marketplace. So to understand some of these challenges a bit better, um, as part of our state of the API report last year, um, we surveyed over 1,500 API practitioners and customers from a wide range of industries. And we learned that the top challenges are standardization, uh, versioning, security, and easy integration between tools. So the report shows that standardization continues to be the top challenge that organizations want to solve. And it has more than doubled in importance since 2016. And the same can be said for versioning as well. The growth in importance of these two challenges um, really shows us with the industry taking on digital transformations and the move towards microservices architecture that more APIs are being created. And this raises a difficulty in maintaining consistency in API design. And just lastly, the, the third most concerning um, challenge in our report was actually security. And that's because um, it said that it's the next frontier in cybercrime. And APIs do provide a new contact point or attack vector, um, which can have vulnerabilities which need to be addressed. So all of these challenges will impact the quality of our APIs. Excuse me. So let's talk a bit more about the importance of quality. So why is quality important? Well, one reason is that it impacts API consumer loyalty. So when consumers run into quality or performance issues with third-party APIs, they first report the problem and then they look at their options. This is what we saw in our survey report. Um, so compared to previous years, um, there's a trend that API consumers are less loyal to the APIs they work with um, when faced with performance issues. 
In 2016, only 30% of respondents said that an issue would lead them to look for a permanent alternative API provider. Their instinct instead was to review service level agreements. But in the years since, uh, service level agreements have decreased and the willingness of consumers to look elsewhere has actually increased. Um, so to 34% in 2019 and now 37% last year in 2020. So we have to ask, why are API consumers less loyal in 2020? It's likely a result of more competition in API marketplaces, plus high demand on API reliability as tools and systems become more connected and dependent. Downtime of a third-party API can also translate directly to loss of revenue because of poor experience for consumers and the services they offer. And aside from consumer loyalty, um, if we look at poor quality um, or poorly functioning APIs within an organization, this can result in interrupted business operations, um, data corruption, or even downtime. Um, and when silo, siloed business units um, can't work together um, in a larger business process, um, this often stifles in innovation and efficiency um, within the organization. So we can see that quality is essential with APIs now, and this is where standardization can help, which I'll be discussing later. So um, I introduced this slide early on to illustrate that APIs are the foundation of our digitally connected world, but let's think about this in a different context. Um, so now as a security officer, so from a security perspective, you now have all these new external connections that can be attack vectors for cyber criminals or unknowing users. So let's think about why cyber criminals and hackers would be interested in exploiting API connections and why you should care. So really cyber criminals care about APIs because they can connect um, out sensitive data. It has been suggested that the value of data is now higher than oil and there is a data economy, that there is a data economy. So in this data economy, data is potentially more valuable um, due to the insight, knowledge, and access that can be extracted from it. So from a company perspective, they could be holding um, confidential and sensitive secrets, which could be accessed via mobile apps, web apps, partner apps, or cloud-based services. If these secrets were accessed by a competitor, partner, um, or made public, it could be seriously damaging. So this is why we're seeing more ransomware attacks in recent times. You may remember the sports watch brand Garmin last year was rumored to pay uh, a $10 million ransom to regain access to the internal systems. It's also worth noting that with the security and uh, regulatory uh, laws worldwide slowly adapting to the technology risks, uh, data breaches of customer data must now be reported and can incur fines and penalties. There is also the loss of trust by customers and loss of company reputation to deal with. And moving on to a personal data perspective, um, our phones, our smartwatches now collect a lot of personal and sensitive um, data. This data can include our personal, personally identifiable information, uh, such as our government ID, our bank accounts and our credit cards and our locations. And when all of these small nuggets of data uh, are, are combined from multiple sources, it can become highly valuable. So with APIs um, in our applications connecting all of this sensitive data and providing highly valuable endpoints, it's really no wonder that um, APIs are appealing for cyber criminals and hackers. So um, therefore, we really need to um, ensure that your APIs are secure during the design, development, uh, testing, and also deployment, um, that all of these are securing your sensitive data. Now, to emphasize the importance of quality uh, from a security perspective in APIs, we can review some real-world examples of security breaches. Um, now, there's quite a few on the screen, um, but we can see some, some of these um, 
the main theme from these really is these breaches were related to um, secure, um, poorly secured and designed APIs um, or unprotected API endpoints. And these flaws allowed the attackers to gain access to user account information, uh, transaction details, and personal health details as well. Um, and what's more worrying is in one of the examples, um, there was the ability for attackers to control or modify um, the configuration of business, government, or utilities infrastructure. Um, so it wouldn't be a stretch that those attackers would be able to control um, our personal IoT devices in the future as well. So let's talk about, um, well, now that we understand the importance and the impact of quality in your API architecture, let's discuss some strategies you can employ in your API development framework to improve quality. So I mentioned that standardization can help improve the quality of your API development. So uh, this is where the API definition comes in. The definition helps define and describe the features and behaviors of the API to be designed. So you can think of the API definition as a blueprint for your house. Um, it would be pretty unconventional unconven to start building walls and windows to your house without knowing if there was going to be a toilet in the way in the future. Um, so it makes sense to plan the design and agree on the design before we start construction. The same can be applied to API development. Now, in the real world, it's unlikely that we finalize an API design um, and no further changes are made during the um, development. But having a definition can certainly go a long way in keeping a consistent and always understandable design philosophy. Now, the industry standard for defining RESTful APIs is the Open API Specification, uh, formerly known as Swagger, which is supported by us at Smart there. Um, so it allows end users to understand how best to work um, with your APIs. And it's also language agnostic and readable by both humans and machines, which was mentioned um, in the last talk. So one of the benefits of API definitions that is somewhat forgotten is the ability to have uh, parallel work, work streams. Um, so that is you can, from your API definition, you can start testing and even creating a virtual uh, web service or before your coding starts. So this ensures that testing for quality starts earlier in your API development lifecycle. So I talked a little bit about design before, but let's dive a, li a little bit deeper on why it matters. So consistency in API design is not a given. We need to think if your, app, your organization is currently a code first or code uh, design first shop, and do your current processes enforce a style guide or not? If we go back to my example of the code first approach, it's more costly to make changes after the API has been uh, coded and built. However, if we move towards a design first approach, which is more collaborative, um, where we involve all the stakeholders from the business um, analysts, testers, and consumers, um, we get a clearer picture of our requirements before we start building. The advantage here is that if we identify changes to the design early in the process, this is a lot more time and cost effective to implement at the design stage, rather than having to go back and make changes once a code has been implemented. At the end of the day, um, the API, for the API to be successful, it needs to meet most of the stakeholders' goals. And without a focus on API design standards, it's difficult to create a consistent uh, API consumer experience. So with API um, adoption, um, we've seen that it's really tied to consistent design. So you might have a really great API, um, but if people don't understand how to use it, they don't know um, what data is being provided, um, what's its functionality, which protocols um, or security schemas it's using, um, then it's most likely that the developer um, will not understand it and they will likely move on, especially if the documentation is not up to date or it's um, a completely different version. So to summarize the strategies to improve quality through standardization and governance, um, we need to focus on gathering uh, inputs uh, from all stakeholders to ensure API design aligns with business purpose. Um, this ensures that um, the API, once designed, 
um, actually does perform what it's supposed to do. Um, we also need to um, move towards a design first uh, approach. Um, now, obviously that's not very easy, um, but there are steps that you can do uh, to move towards that um, slowly as an organization. It's also worth um, leveraging a single source of truth for API definitions and also utilizing an API style guide um, as an initial step um, towards governance and creating that consistency in your API design. Um, and similarly, leveraging custom rules um, to validate open API definitions for compliance with API design guidelines. And lastly, um, we need to understand your API workflow. And really, that's where the API, um, open API definition can help you um, by making everything uh, visible and consistent. Um, and Swagger Hub is also able to build on top um, of the API, open API definition. Now, just uh, quickly, um, I'll close on security. Um, so when discussing quality, we do need to talk about API security. So what is API security? Simply put, API security is protecting the APIs you build and consume from nefarious use because businesses transfer data and connect services via APIs. Um, so they are especially prone to attacks as, they, as I discussed in the earlier slides. Uh, and Gartner Research uh, estimates that by 2022, uh, API abuses will be the most frequent attack vector resulting in data breaches for enterprise web applications. So it's crucial to protect API connections and verify that those connections are not prone to attack or acting maliciously. So how can we achieve our API security goals? And an, an example would be your call goals would most likely include ensuring le only legitimate users can access the system. Uh, the system doesn't allow users to do more than they should. Confidential data can only be seen by intended users and transaction information is protected. Um, now, for the sake of time, I won't go through all the points, but a good starting point to achieving these goals um, is being able to identify and catalog your APIs and endpoints. This is because you can't protect what you don't know. Um, you may have public APIs sharing data um, that your operations and security teams are completely unaware of. Uh, this is where um, Swagger Hub can help by providing that source of truth um, and API catalog to give your organization visibility. On the second point, um, the second point is assur assuring and managing API user identities um, because offering public APIs means that API calls come from a wide range of customers, partners, and applications. Yet many API security models authenticate and authorize um, only on the initial API user's identity and then let the user run under a trusted shared identity with broad data entitlements. This actually opens up the API to breaches. So not only should we verify who the user is, we also need to manage what level of access to data various users are entitled to based on their roles. This is an area usually handled by identity governance and single sign-on solutions, um, but also Swagger Hub with Open API is able to specify and work with industry authentication and authorization schemes. Another component of API security design, um, API security is the design. So the context, the usage and purpose vary across APIs, creating different security demands and requirements. One of the biggest mistakes we find when reviewing API securities uh, products and services is inadequate attention to API classification and organization. Um, so good classification of API types um, is critical for understanding the risks and the value add of your APIs. Um, by categorizing and tagging APIs early in the, in, in the identification and design process, this helps ensure that the right teams and appropriate policies are assigned. These are areas of the API design where Swagger Hub and Open API can help. And lastly, uh, just as crucial, is uh, API security testing. We can start to identify weaknesses in the API definition during um, development using security oriented functional tests and then continue to test this through to production where we can help identify data flow and trust level issues. Examples of what we should test for 
can include ensuring that a request from user A uh, for user B's data um, will actually fail. And that uh, failure messages look the same no matter which element of backend infrastructure catches the invalid request. And additionally, by using the API definition, you'll be able to test the API's behavior, matches its purpose, and there is no unintended data leakage. So in summary, um, APIs are the foundation of our digitally connected world. Um, but this means that quali the quality of those APIs is ever more important um, because it affects the adoption of your APIs and also um, the viability of your business operations. And um, it does open your organization up to more security breaches. But having said that, um, there are strategies available to improve your quality of your API architecture um, through standardization and governance to build that consistency and collaboration involving all the stakeholders in the API design process and reviewing your security policies. So I do apologize for going over time, but uh, thank you for listening and um, happy to take on any questions now or even in the uh, breakout. Thanks a lot, Christoph, for an amazing session. And I think uh, the overall session was really informative. So it does answer a lot of questions which audiences had. Or if they have any kind of questions, they can definitely reach out to you later. But uh, once again, a very big thank you for sharing that amazing session with us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.